Now in this session you are going to discuss control unit that is a very important topic for your semester exams and for the, for the gate exams also. So what is the control unit? Control unit is nothing but one unit where it will generate control signals for different purposes. Control signals to select one device whether say take the example of memory after selecting a certain memory location through the address bus and the address decoded hardware. Now what to be done with the memory location? Should I go for read or should we go for memory write? So control signal read and write will decide that one whether I shall be going for memory read or memory write. Should I make one IO port for the input or for the output? So that will be decided by the control signal. Should I make this data path enabled or disabled? That also be will get decided by the control signal. So control signal will be generated from the obviously from the control units. So as a one line definition I have written this one, it directs the main operations by sending control signals to the data path. It flows between CPU, it may be between the memory, maybe the external IO devices, maybe some other devices, internal ports and so on. So it will, it will decide all these issues. Okay. So now for the example you can say that this is the clock pulse and you see this is the first cycle, this is the second cycle, this is the third time period and so on. So first, second, third I am marking them as T0, T1, T2. In the first case it will do something, in the second cycle it will do something and so on. Say for a very simple example I can tell in this way, let us suppose that is one instruction called say add R1, R2. What does it mean? Means R1 will get initialized by the current content of R1 plus the current content of the register R2. Now how these circuits will be operating? Say I can show in this way, let us suppose that is the register R1, there is a register R2. So at first I should select this register in the read mode. I should select this register in the read mode and also this register in the read mode. I am just giving you a very uh, simple example. So from this register's content, let us suppose this is my ALU, this is my ALU where the addition operation will take place. So data will be coming from register 1 and register 2. So first time this control signal say C0 and C1 will be enabled to make the registers to be selected in the read mode. Next time it will make this say C2 and C3, these two control signals will be enabled to make the data path enabled so that the registers 1 content and the register 2's content must be available to the inputs of the ALU. Then the ALU should get enabled say by the control signal C4, ALU should get enabled. So ALU will do the sum of R1's content and R2 contents because their contents are available through the data paths. Now what will be the output? Output will be obtained from the ALU as a sum. So please tell me where should I keep this output? I should keep this output to R1, I should keep this output to R1. So this output will be going to R1. So again another control signal say C5 will be enabled so that the ALU's output will be going to R1. And in the meantime also the another control signal will come into the play. So let it be C0, let it be C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, so let it be C6 which will make this register to be enabled in the right mode. And in the meantime obviously the other control signals have got disabled. So you see the sequence of control signals how they should get generated so that this addition operation can take place everything will be decided by the control circuit. Just think for each and every processor so many instructions are there, so many control signals are to be initiated, are to be enabled, are to be disabled after this before that. So think about the complexity of the control unit. But here in case of computer organization, we are just drawing the block diagram. So that will be a black box to us. We cannot see what is actually deciding, what is, what is the complicated, complicated circuit residing in that control unit. We are taking this one as a black box or block diagram. 
but the circuit will be tremendously complicated. So now for the first time period, the C01, C1 should be enabled in the second uh, time cycle. Then I should make this say 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 this um, C21, C3 will be enabled. Then in the third cycle, this C4 will be enabled. So this listing will be done accordingly. So it has been de depicted in this particular diagram. So there is a clocking. From there, I'll be having this say 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 we are having say T0, say T1, say T2, and dot 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 in this way. You know the meaning of this T0, T1, T2. I have discussed. There is a control signal generator circuit. So now opcode is being kept in this particular register. Opcode means operation code means instruction. So this opcode will be decoded because until and unless we decode the opcode, we cannot get the meaning. What is the purpose of the opcode? And after getting decoded, one of the output lines of this decoder will get enabled. Decoder is a combinational circuit which will have n number of input lines and to the power of n number of output lines. Depending upon the voltage combination at the input, one of the output lines will be selected. That we read in our digital electronics classes. Okay. So depending upon the opcode, any one of the outputs will get selected by the decoder. So let it be instruction 1 or say instruction 2 or say instruction 3 and so on. Depending upon that, depending upon that, the control signals will get generated. So what are they? They are nothing but the control signals. What are they? You can also like write in this way. They are nothing but the control signals. So I think you have got the logic here, how these control signals are getting generated. Control circuits can be fabricated in two different ways. One is a microprogrammed control. So I'm writing this one here, say. One is a microprogrammed and another one is a hardware controlled. Look at the spelling of hardware, please. So this is a hardware control. So two types of control circuits are to be fabricated. So in our next video, we shall go for this microprogram control. So how the microprogram control circuit can generate it, then I shall go for the hardware control circuit as well. Please watch my next videos. Uh, thanks for watching.